For Meer Urfi, her profession is her life. She is a lawyer specializing in human rights and spends hours every day in this district court of Srinagar. The city lies right beneath the Himalayan mountains in the Indian part of Kashmir, a region fought over by India and Pakistan for decades. Meer fights tough cases, many of those being against laws being misused against the local people, a job which comes with risks. You do feel the fear, but you learn to live with it. Me starts her day by offering prayer, or the namaz. A devout Muslim and a native Kashmiri, she has been acutely aware of her identity and what it means since she was a child. When she was young, she wanted to be a journalist. But her father and an inspiring article she read on lawyers convinced her to study law instead. A criminal lawyer, she is brushing up on the details of a case that she has to argue in the court today. She likes to be thorough with her research and paperwork. She knows the kind of responsibility she shoulders as an advocate in a place like Kashmir. Not only in Kashmir, but in any disputed area, the role of a lawyer is important. In any disputed area, laws end up being misused, people are detained, they are put behind bars, many rights are denied. That is where a lawyer comes in, because to uphold those rights, you have to go to court. Mir's husband is a lawyer himself. As they both drive to work together every morning, it's mostly the discussion of cases which follows. Should we file a bail application? Mir says living in a disputed region comes with its own struggles but she understood the gravity of the situation when she entered the legal world. There's always been an atmosphere of tension and fear in Kashmir. We have an overbearing presence of security forces. Any police or security officer, or even any gunman, can enter your house or arrest you at any time. People here lack an elementary sense of security that nothing will happen to them if they have not done anything wrong. Regardless of one's actions, they can be targeted at any time. In the lawyer's chamber, many people are already waiting for her. As she goes around, she is approached by many seeking her help on their cases. Mir says in the past two years, the situation has become worse and there is an atmosphere of fear, intimidation and mistrust among people. According to her, sweeping misuse of vaguely worded laws to lock people up or put them under preventive detention with little chance of getting bail has led to this fear. The Public Safety Act or the PSA is one such law. This woman has come to seek help for her son who has been put behind bars under the PSA. Meer is trying to console her and asking her to be courageous. The law allows for preventive detention for those who the security agencies think can cause harm to law and order or national security. <laughs> 39-year-old Shakil Ahmed Bhatt has spent close to two and a half decades in jail. His active involvement in protests against the Indian administration since he was young has led to multiple cases filed against him over the years. 
Some of which Mir has been fighting for him. Two years ago, Shakil was put in jail under the PSA. Whenever it's an important date like Independence Day or Republic Day or an important event is taking place, the police pick me up or file cases against me to keep me caught up in courts and hearings. That's Shakil in his younger days, being arrested for demonstrating. He says that not only he, but his entire family is targeted. His younger brother Sajjad has been behind bars for four months now. He too has been booked under the PSA. His wife Tabassum says she is not sure when she will be able to see her husband again. I feel worried and lonely. These four months feel like four years. I've never felt this way in the ten years of my marriage. The kids are also missing him so much. They're crying for him. When they took my husband away, the kids were asking why. They heard others saying that their father has been booked under the PSA. They started asking what's the PSA. Tabassum says all her married life, she has seen Sajjad being called in by the local police time and again and being locked up with no explanation for days. In the past two years, she says, this pattern has only gotten worse. In the summer of 2019, two years ago, the Narendra Modi-led Indian nationalist government revoked or abrogated the special status which was given to the state of Jammu and Kashmir under Article 370 of the Indian Constitution. This move was followed by a long preventive security lockdown, communication blackout and mass arrests. A situation indicative of what the region has seen for over seven decades now. This special status was accorded by the Indian administration after the region got embroiled in a bloody conflict following the partition of India and Pakistan in 1947, with both countries laying claims over it. A plebiscite was promised to the people of the state post the partition to make a choice between the two countries. That vote never took place. Since then, the Kashmir region, known for its Himalayan peaks, picturesque landscape and lakes, has seen a troubled history with continued violence. The region has been one of the most militarized areas of the world. Driving through the roads of Srinagar, Mir says Kashmiris now feel more alienated than ever. Peaceful protests and demonstrations have ceased and even posting opinions on social media has invited legal trouble for many. Article 370 was revoked, but there were no protests here after that because mass arrests started happening. According to the government's own figures, around 5,000 people were arrested. They said the abrogation was for the benefit of the people. So then why were people kept under curfew? Because they wanted to install fear. The Public Safety Act has been misused since the 90s. There's also an Amnesty International report about that, and it's even been worse since Article 370 was revoked. Like Tabassum, Sajjad and countless others, 30-year-old shopkeeper Akib Bhatt too has been a victim of the valley's disturbed history. Four days before the abrogation of Article 370, he was detained under PSA and transferred to a jail outside Jammu and Kashmir. Since the article was revoked in 2019 and since my release, the police have been bothering me a lot, calling me to the station again and again. And I have no choice but to go. If I don't go, they will raid my house at midnight and my family will be frightened. He says he has been targeted continuously because he comes from a locality in Srinagar, which has historically been known as the seat of resistance against the Indian administration. The police have already told me that if anything happens in that area, they will pick us up, about five to ten people that they target from this locality. They said they won't even investigate. Akif says he lives in fear day in and day out. 
the feeling of fear was resonated by many others we spoke to. Freedom of speech, they said, is lost as they feel unsure about what can land them in trouble. Representatives of the National Ruling Party, the Bharatiya Janata Party or the BJP, on the other hand, say that there is complete freedom of speech and expression and that there is transparency and accountability that prevents any law from being misused. Altaf Thakur, the spokesperson of the BJP though, believes some fear is necessary. That fear is necessary. People who are fighting against this country will feel that fear. You cannot bring about positive change in the country until you instill that fear in the hearts of any national elements. Since Article 370 was revoked, there has been transparency and accountability in Jammu and Kashmir. First of all, I don't understand who gets to define who is patriotic or not. I want to ask all the political parties if they deserve to be called that. If you're calling the general masses unpatriotic and they're not supporting you, then who exactly are you representing? Meer has stopped by in this cafe for a breather after a long day before she heads back home. She's glad her family supports her work. But she also knows that there are risks. She is aware that sometimes her activities are tracked and her phone calls tapped. Risk factors are there in all professions. Maybe there are more risks in my profession, especially because of the kind of cases I take on. But if something is written in my fate, nothing will stop that from happening. You do feel the fear, but you learn to live with it. Meer says she loves her profession. And she will keep going as long as she has the strength. At the moment though, she says it's time to go back home to her family. Oh, e-traffic, yeah.